Hey everyone, it's Catherine at Resident Obsession and I'm spending a little time in the studio this afternoon and I wanted to take a moment to talk about a really important topic, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but something I get asked a lot and that is the differences between a doming resin and a casting resin. So the, the reason this is important is because depending on what project you want to do or you want to make, you need to be sure to choose the right resin for your project so that you can get what you want accomplished. So just a, a couple basic concepts here. A doming resin is one that mixes thick enough that when you put it on a surface or put it into something, it's going to have a dome over the top. Okay, so like for example, this is a pendant I did a few weeks ago and it might be a little hard for you to see, but there's a, there's a, a dome to the finish, okay? And it just, if you just think about it, a teardrop or something, a drop of something, you know, sitting on a surface and staying in that dome shape, that's exactly what we want this to do when we're say doming pendants or something like this where I domed it on the surface of a domino tile and there's no sides to the project so you want a doming resin to keep it on the surface without sides. Now that's in opposed to a casting resin which is a resin that mixes in a thinner viscosity and it's meant for something like a mold because you've got sides. You could also use a casting resin in a bezel. It's got sides as well so it's going to stay on there but or stay in there but it's not going to have that domed finish like so many of us like to get when we're doming and resin pendants. Okay so the reason this is important is because while you can sometimes switch back and forth using them interchangeably for the most part you can't just because you're not going to get the results you want. So for example, a doming resin mixes in a, in a thicker surface tension and it's going to stay on the surface of something without sides. So if you want to do resin for artwork, you want a doming resin because otherwise a casting resin is going to mix way too thin and just and not stay on the surface of your panel board or your um, canvas or whatever you're using. Now, in terms of a mold, you could use something like a doming resin in a mold but the the problem there is that because they mix thicker they're gonna retain bubbles and it's gonna make it harder for you to get all the bubbles out of a mold before it starts to cure. Doming resins in general are meant to mix and get applied to a surface and stay in a eighth inch depth or less versus something like a casting resin which you know, depending on, you know, the volume, you can cast it once and just some other intricacies about the particular resin you're using are meant to go in thick pours. So like, for example, this is like a one inch cube um, and you could pour this whole one inch at once if you want, if you're using a casting resin. Okay, so let me show you with a couple of examples just so you can um, know what I'm working with. So I've gone ahead and poured some resin here in the cups. I haven't mixed it yet. On the left, I am using the Illumilite Amazing Clear Cast Epoxy. Okay, now full disclosure here, you're gonna see that this hardener is a little yellow. That is not how the resin comes, all right? What happened is, <laughs> if you're anything like me and sometimes you squirrel away resin in strange places and you forget that you've got it, um, these are old bottles, okay? These are a couple of years old. But you know what, if you have resin that has turned yellow, but it's been properly stored, it will cure, okay? So you can use it for some of your practice projects like what I'm doing here today. You could also color this resin and use it as a colored resin in your project. So don't throw it away. If you do decide, you know what, it's just too yellow, I only want the really clear stuff, I don't want it anymore, properly dispose of this. Do not pour it down your drain. Don't put it in your trash just like this. The best advice I can give you is to take it to a hazardous materials collection center and that's because there's a few components in resin that are toxic to fish and um, aquatic life. So we want to make sure all our frogs and fish friends and that kind of thing stay healthy. The other resin um, I'm using is the Resin Obsession Super Clear Resin which is a casting resin. Okay, so we're working with a doming resin, we're working with a casting resin. All right, so let me get some gloves on and we're gonna um, pour these two together. So when I'm working with resin, I always wear gloves. 
I like to wear nitrile gloves. They're the least likely to react with your resin. Be sure too that you always work in a well ventilated area. You want to make sure that you know you've got some fresh air circulating in the room. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my doming resin. You can see here that it's kind of thick. You know, a doming resin is going to have the consistency of something like honey or syrup. So let's get it together. When it comes to mixing resin, my general rule is I like to mix for 10% of the pot time of the resin. Pot times vary from resin to resin depending on which ones you're using. If you are unsure about the pot time of your resin, it should be included with your resin kit's instructions. If not, reach out to the manufacturer and they should be able to tell you. If it's a resin you've purchased from Resin Obsession, we have all that information in a PDF on our site. And it details all the resins we sell, their pot times, minimum and maximum mixing amounts, all the, the good information that you need to know when using a resin. All right, so you can see that this is like the thickness of honey. I'm not sure how well you can see, but there's, um, there's some bubbles here in the resin. So even if you're really careful in mixing a doming resin, you're still gonna get a few bubbles. And of course you want to scrape your the sides of your cup and your stirring utensil a few times during the process. For any of you who've ever thought you've done a really great job mixing your resin and you only to find out later after you cast it that some of your stuff cured and some of your stuff stayed sticky, I would dare say that it's more than likely because you did a really great job stirring here in the center, but you didn't get your sides mix very well and so because all of us resin people are super thrifty when we go to pour this stuff we scrape every last bit out of the cup that we can and you scrape out that stuff that's stuck to the sides and guess what it's not mixed very well so it's going to cure sticky whereas the first stuff you poured you mix pretty well and so that stuff generally cures okay all right so We'll look at the resin here. You can um, see some bubbles in the cup. All right, once again, it's, it's thick like syrup, like honey. And that's what helps it stay on the surface of something without any sides or what helps it stay in a nice dome after you've poured it. All right, so now let's mix the super clear resin. Clean off my stick. All right, so this is the Resin Obsession Super Clear Resin. This is a casting resin. All right. All right, so right away you should be able to see that it's a lot more liquid when you start mixing the two parts together. And that's because the advantage of using a casting resin is they mix in a thinner viscosity, making it much easier for bubbles to escape. So when you're casting, that's obviously something you want because especially if you're using an intricate mold, a really deep mold, um, something that's got a lot of nooks and crannies in it, you want bubbles to escape. And so the thinner viscosity of the resin, the easier that is to, um, or that's more likely that's gonna happen for you. All right, so you can see right away, we're, we're a lot thinner mixing the resin. It's a lot thinner viscosity, not necessarily um, as thick as the other stuff, a lot more liquid and you should be able to see there's um, fewer bubbles in it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it a little bit more. Scrape the sides of my cup. So when you go to buy a resin, it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be doming or it's going to be casting. Now, 
theoretically you could use a doming resin in a mold but like we talked earlier the thicker the mold it's going to be harder for you to get all the bubbles out before your resin starts to cure um, if you are using a casting resin you could dome just a little bit on a surface you know something small like this domino yeah you could probably put a little bit on here and you're going to probably do okay if you want to make a big resin painting though a casting resin is not going to stay in a nice even um, layer on the surface of your painting and you're going to get the voids and the fish eyes sometimes that you'll hear people talk about when they're using a resin for painting all right so we look like we're good and mixed here so I'll show you again thin viscosity very watery but fewer bubbles okay so let's take a look at the two resins again here so we have we have this is our our doming resin you can see we've got a few bubbles in there and we've got our casting resin next to it not nearly as many bubbles and so, you know, with a, with a doming resin, the bubbles, you know, probably aren't as big a deal because if you're not going to pour it really thick, then you should be able to get them out easily with a heat gun or draw them out with a toothpick, a uh, barbecue light or something like that because they just don't have much um, vertical space to be able to rise to pop. And these also, um, the longer this sits, it will also pop as well. So, you know, this cup is, you know, thick. This is a one ounce cup. So obviously the bubbles on the bottom have to come all the way up to the top here to be able to pop. But once you pour it, you know, then it's got less space as well. But, you know, just, you know, it's one of the um, advantages to casting resins that they just, they mix thinner, fewer bubbles, you know, less to, to worry about. So let me go ahead and pour a little bit of this out onto some wax paper. So that way, hopefully, you can see some other differences as well. So your doming resin is going to mix thicker. So you see I've got a little bit out here on the um, wax paper. Let's see if I can pick this up for you so you guys can see a little better. And it's staying in a, in a formed drop. Now, obviously, we don't have you know a bezel or anything that this went in or a cavity, so, so it's going to spread. But if you can I don't know how well you can see but especially here on the edges you know it's still rounded so we've got a nice dome versus if we do our casting resin let's pour a little here So the casting resin, I tried to pour about the same amount. You can see that it's already starting to spread out further than what the doming resin is. And that's just because it's not as thick. It doesn't have the surface tension to want to stay in a nice dome. It's already um, spreading out a little further. Let's see if I can pick this up and show you. And the edges are already starting to get a little jagged, so to speak. And that's because it's a, a thicker viscosity. It just it doesn't want to stay in that nice drop shape. And so what happens, especially if you're going to you know, try some resin painting, is when you start to draw it out, it wants to see like there, see how it's pulling away from itself? That's, that's what happens, is it just it wants to, it, it wants to fish eye. It doesn't want to stay in a nice shape versus the doming, which you start pulling that out and see it still wants to kind of self-correct. It wants to heal itself and make a nice dome because that's just kind of what it does. There you go. So see it's trying to heal, whereas this one kind of pulls back into some weird shapes. Okay, so I've got time for a few questions. If anybody has any um, questions they want to ask, um, this is really important stuff. I know this is pretty basic, but I, I get some questions every week about um, somebody buying resin for a project and it didn't work out the way they did. And, you know, when I, I ask, well, are you using a doming resin or a casting resin? Unfortunately, you know, half the time they can't tell me. And that's, you know, generally where the, the problems start is that you got to make sure you're picking the right resin for your project. So, okay. All right, everyone. Well, if you want to take a, a look later and have some more questions, by all means, um, private message me or, or leave a note with this video and I'm happy to um, help you. Thanks again for stopping by today and um, hope to see you around again. If you haven't already, be sure to follow us on 
um, Instagram and Facebook so you'll be notified when we have more uh, videos uh, coming on. And when you get a minute, stop by resinobsession.com and we're going to help you with your projects. All right, everyone. Thanks. We'll see you later.